This video is sponsored by nobody. Just follow my Instagram, it's kinda lit. I was scrolling through Instagram, wasting my life away, when I came across a guy taking an old digital point and shoot and just converting it into infrared. And I thought, I can do that. I decided to take my Canon M2, which is a camera that's been giving me problems for quite some time, so I really didn't care what happened to it, and decided to convert it into infrared. You know, seems simple enough, just open it up, take off the IR cut filter, and put it back together. How hard could it be? So I started. Now, to take this camera apart, it really wasn't that difficult. A couple of screws, disconnect a few ribbon cables here and there, and it was apart. Pull off the IR cut filter, put it back all together, and then the shutter stopped working. So I had to pull it apart again to see where I went wrong, and put one of the screws back in the wrong spot, and it ended up damaging the coils for the shutter assembly. Obviously, it was integral to the camera. After taking it apart and putting it back together a few more times, it just doesn't turn on. And I broke it. Oh man, I'm ruined. What am I gonna do? This video is done for. I don't have another camera to use. That's all I need. I just need another camera. If only, if only I had... I decided to replace my Canon M2 with the NEX3. I originally was going to use it to scan and film, but the results were so lackluster, I really didn't see point in using it for that. Now, taking this camera was a little bit more difficult. There wasn't really a video I could find on how to take it apart, so I just had to look at some random pictures on some random website about it. It definitely took longer to get this camera apart, but once I got down to the sensor, it wasn't smooth. To take off the IR cut filter was a lot more difficult compared to the Canon. I had to take a flathead and pry it off. I was quite worried that I had damaged the sensor because of how violent it was, but it looked okay, it looked fine, so I just decided to go with it, and I put everything back together. Again, took me a very long time there's so much stuff that I couldn't figure out where certain things went and where certain things didn't but eventually I got it done it doesn't quite fit correctly there's a few gaps here and there but it works at last I was finished I was done I didn't have any more cameras to ruin you know what that means go outside and take some infrared photos now this is the first photo I took that really shows how infrared photography works with the foliage being so bright, obviously in the highlights and in the shadows, and then showing the sky, even though it's like in the middle of the day, it being dark, really showing how just the blue sky doesn't reflect the infrared rays like trees and foliage. Now, obviously, landscape really works for infrared, but I think you have to find more interesting compositions because you can only take so many pictures of trees before it gets kind of old. You just keep seeing tree after tree, and it's kind of boring. So I wanted to explore in a neighborhood setting. That's something I'm very comfortable with and that I've been doing in my own work quite a bit. I think a suburban neighborhood really lends itself to interesting photography. Now, I wanted to explore how infrared photography could be used in other types of photography like cars, something that I'm personally interested in and want to improve on. So, I took a picture of this car that's just on the street, and I think it works quite well. The composition is obviously a part of that, but I think it's just an appealing image with the two-tone of the red and blue teal kind of colors, really letting the white of the car shine through. Something else you can do with infrared photography is you can change the colors because with infrared there is no certain set color. day, infrared photography is a great way to expand your portfolio. It's relatively inexpensive, just get like $120 camera body, $100 vintage lens, and an adapter with a IR filter for like 60 bucks. And if you're not afraid to do the IR conversion yourself with getting rid of the IR cut filter, you can obviously send that to somebody else to do, but that will cost you more. I wasn't afraid to do the conversion myself because it's a fairly cheap camera. I wasn't too worried about breaking them. And realistically, 
realistically, as long as you put everything back in the right place. From my experience, electronics aren't that fragile. You can kind of mess around with them, and generally, they'll be fine as long as you put them back the right way. I hope you enjoyed. I don't know how often I'll be uploading, but I'll try to get one video out at least a month. Have a great day, and I'll see you uh, in the next one, I guess. Thank you.